here's the ruler. Where is the center of gravity? Well, presumably it's in the middle, and that's certainly true. If I put my finger in the middle, um, somewhere there, oops, it balances. So that's the center of gravity. But suppose that I attach some weight at one end. Well, where is it? Well, it's not so easy to guess, right? But there is a very nice way of finding a center of gravity, which I'll start by um, doing it with that way. You simply put two fingers um, to support the object, and then you bring them toward each other. And automatically, you see one stops and one starts, one stops, and they meet automatically at the center of gravity. And I can even do this with eyes closed. This works in general. If I attach, for example, a mass at one end, I don't know where the center of gravity is, but my fingers automatically find the center of gravity. And if I put a hefty mass at the other end, well, the center of gravity will be really close to that end. And indeed, it finds the center of gravity over here. And if I put both of them at the same time, where is it? Well, ah, it automatically finds the center of gravity. Again, I'm not deliberately controlling the movement of my fingers. I'm just bringing them slowly toward each other. And automatically, one of them starts sliding, and the other stops, and the other starts sliding, and one stops, and they meet always at the center. So how does it work? It works because of a really simple but widely applicable principle. You know, when two bodies are sliding against each other, or they are sort of stopped and they want to start sliding, there is something that's opposing the slide, and that's called friction. It turns out that the friction is proportional to increases with the force that's pressing the two, body against each, two bodies against each other, but also is proportional to some coefficient. You know, the fact of matter, it's very, very widely established observational fact. When you are sliding, the friction is slightly smaller than when you are stopped and want to start sliding. We talk about the difference between the dynamic friction, that's the friction that's acting when the bodies are already sliding, versus static friction, when these two bodies are stopped against each other and then they want to start sliding. Static friction is a little larger than the dynamic friction. Okay, suppose that I start bringing those two fingers toward each other. Well, there's some random error in the beginning. So first, this finger started moving for some reason. Okay, when the, this finger is closer to the center of gravity than this finger, this finger is taking more weight over the ruler than this finger. So there's more friction there. And so, because there's more friction on this finger than on this finger, naturally, the finger that slides is this one. But you see, once this finger starts sliding, it's sliding with dynamic friction, whereas this is stopped at static friction. So, in principle, you see, when these are at equal distances from, uh, from the uh, center, of, uh, center of gravity, they take equal weights, so they should have equal frictions. But that's not true, because this is already sliding, so it's taking the sliding friction, uh, dynamic friction, whereas this is taking static friction. So, this one can keep sliding, although it's taking more and more weight, because its friction is a little less than this one. So it overshoots towards the center, and when it's really close, then the other one starts moving, and so on. That's why they alternate stick-slip mechanism, this is called slip, stick, slip, stick, and then they come toward each other. So if you take a weighted version, well, for a long time, this uh, left finger slides because, left as seen from you, slides because it's, of course, far from the center of gravity, so it has less weight on it, so it has less friction. But it overshoots, and then the other one starts sliding, overshoots, 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 and then they finally meet in the center. So this mechanism is using the slight difference between the dynamic and static frictions and the fact that, well, when you come at equal distances from the center of gravity, the one that's already sliding can overshoot. And then once that stops, uh, it stays there for a while. And then only when the other sliding finger has stopped, can the 
uh, this one starts sliding again and then overshoot and come towards the end and so on. They come towards the end. Is there an accepted number of times there will be a slip and a stick, like over the course of 30 centimetres? That seems arbitrary. That is very, very, uh, that's an excellent question. I think it's um, case by case. And you can do a very, very precise calculation using a simple model of a stick slip and so forth. But the fact of, of the matter is that it, uh, it's a very unstable process. I mean, depending on tiny, tiny irregularities of the surface and so on, um, the number seems to vary quite a lot. So um, I think we have to uh, resort to just experiments. And the theoretical calculation does give some picture, but I don't think it gives really as accurate um, you know, prediction as the numbers suggest. Paper clips is linked to the rubber band, but not between themselves. Let's finish with something that is work in progress. So far, we have been linking paper clips together. And Sometimes we refer to this as addition.